Hey, come on in and enjoy some coffee with me. All right, so I haven't made coffee yet today, so uh, forgive me if my mind skips a little bit. For today's coffee, I'm actually going to be exploring a little something new. Um, this is from Unravel Coffee. Unravel is a coffee company founded by a good friend, Steve Holt, who um, used to be with 90 Plus Coffee, um, and he founded Unravel, based out of Denver, Colorado. I realized the other day that I still hadn't, I'd, I'd had a little bit of Unravel from some coffee shows, but I'd never ordered from them. Uh, and I thought I would, I'd actually, so what I'm having today is Unravel's uh, holiday blend. Initially intended on doing this right before Christmas, but um, the post office wasn't able to get it to me. Uh, we actually had a little bit of a snafu, uh, didn't ever show up. And uh, fortunately, Unravel was kind enough to just send another one. So uh, great customer service there. But it has arrived. I've been able to have a little bit of it. Uh, it's really tasty. A couple things about Unravel. So they they do they do a couple things really um, that kind of catch my eye. First is the their approach to roasting. So they actually roast on a bellwether, um, and this is how I ran across uh, or discovered Unravel uh, initially was at a um, coffee trade show, uh, and they were working with. Uh, Bellwether. Bellwether is a roasting company, a, a company that makes coffee roasters, and they they have taken kind of a unique approach to the coffee roasters that they make. They are uh, like industry focused coffee roasters, so they're not like home roaster type roasters yet. Uh, but what they make is an all electric roaster, and it kind of looks like a it's like a refrigerator sized laundry machine. <laughs> um, if you can imagine that, because you can kind of see the drum in there, uh, but it it looks like looks like a refrigerator, and again, all electric. So if you go visit on Ravel site, they talk about the um, uh, zero emission roasting of coffee, which I think is an admirable pursuit. Uh, of course, how the electricity is made will really determine the emissions uh, of the roasting of that coffee. And I haven't researched enough about Bellwether to, to see how they're making the machines. So I can't speak to that, and I won't. Uh, but they're interesting machines, uh, and they make good coffee. One of the things about Bellwether that uh, I'm kind of keeping an eye on is it, it kind of looks like it'll give more power to smaller cafes uh, and smaller roasters who are, are selling coffee in a cafe to uh, produce more efficiently, smaller amounts of coffee and on demand, because it's the kind of thing you can just throw into a cafe. You don't need, um, like one of the things about uh, industrial roasters is you need a, a setup, which unless you're using a really tiny roaster, and by tiny roaster, I mean something that can roast um, like a kilo at a time, uh, but really no larger. I think even those need venting systems, but th th this is the point. Most like industrial roasters, you need a, a significant venting system uh, to deal with the ro the smoke from roasting. And often, um, you know, the larger you get to a certain size, you need even a, what's called an afterburner, which deals with the the smoke that comes out of roasting. So that's out of reach for uh, anyone who's not roasting a whole lot, uh, and there is not that much. Um, from an accessibility standpoint for people who don't, like companies who don't roast a whole lot. If you're a cafe and you're serving local customers coffee and sometimes roasted coffee, you actually might not need <laughs> that much coffee. Uh, and I, I don't know, I can't speak to the volumes, but um, there is a gap and I think Bellwether's trying to fit it. And it should be interesting to see if that brings more... Uh, crafted coffee to more places around the world. Anyhow, Unravel. So the other thing about Unravel, they use a bellwether. The other thing is uh, they source coffees which are processed in interesting ways. Now, I can't really speak too much about this right now because I haven't um, done the research. I was just kind of taking a look 
the the holiday blend is made with uh, Ethiopia, Panama, and Colombia, and their Ethiopian coffee is an anaerobic natural processed coffee, and their Panama and their Colombia are both honey processed. Uh, and I want to do some research on how and, and what exactly uh, those processes are doing. But I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, Steve had been um, when he was working with 90 plus, they had been doing that kind of that kind of work with different kinds of processing of coffee. Uh, and I think that's something I'm going to take a look at this year and explore more and share more is the processing level. That's where um, so coffee, coffee is a fruit. It's like a cherry. And the what we what we have here is the roasted pit of that fruit, essentially. Now there's a there's an entire process that happens to go from the fruit to the pit. Essentially, how do you how do you get the pit out of there? You can, of course, just take it out, but um, there are sophisticated ways of doing that, which impart more flavor into the pit, into the coffee, so that you taste what the what the coffee can can give you at the end. So that the processing of that is what um, is what all, a lot of what determines the kind of taste you're going to get from your coffee. So I'm really interested to explore those kinds of things. I think um, this is, like I said, this is a blend. I'm going to want to explore their single origins and try some things out. But for now, let's dive in. Um, I've rambled a bit here, and the camera setup is not fantastic for uh, recording what I'm doing. So I'm just going to um, brew up the coffee and then talk about it afterwards. How's that sound? All right. I'll be right back. Maybe I will hop in here. The coffee's blooming right now. Um, bring it on the Kalita wave. So I've, I've, I've brewed and enjoyed this coffee. Last, last brew I did, it came off a little muddled, muddled, muddied maybe, uh, muddied, and a little bit roasty, uh, which is interesting. There could be a roastiness to it. I don't smell that at all, so it was a little surprising to taste. When I made that brew, I did about 16 to 1. I was doing my, my pretty usual when I brew a Kalita Wave. I tend to do about 30 grams of coffee and about 500, 510 grams of water. Uh, and that's about what I did. So this time I'm taking a little bit of a different approach. Uh, same grind size because I feel like the grind size is good. Doing 25 grams of coffee to 450 grams of water. So that's about 18 to 1. So I'm just going to pull that out and see what happens. Uh, I have a feeling that that will help me taste more of the flavors with this particular coffee, but we'll see if my assumption is correct. I'm just coming up with this, this experiment as I make this video. So, all right. Mm. The coffee itself, uh, uh, it's got a very interesting um there's something almost meaty to the aroma it doesn't smell like meat but kind of like feels like that in my nose like a very round um rich aroma there's definitely a lot of honey in there and some like caramelized nuttiness, kind of pecan pie like in a way. Very interesting. They're, um, I'm not going to say they're tasting notes yet. I mean, I know what they are, so that's going to influence my, my view, but I'm going to wait to tell you. Okay. Mm. It smells very delightful. It doesn't, it doesn't smell, uh, light, um, and, uh, bright, like I might um, expect from some like lighter roasted coffees, some, like Ethiopian Panama, Panama coffees. Um, Panama, I might actually expect some like floral components, but that's not that's not jumping out at me. Okay, the it, the bloom is is long past, so I'm gonna get back to it. So I just had a little bit of a smell of the aroma as it was brewing, very floral, um, like. Uh, what kind of flowers that's that that was the aroma coming off is is like fresh flowers like sticking your face in like 
a bush of a bush of flowers. Yeah, fresh flowers. All right, we have a brew. So in the cup, interestingly, and I should I, I've said this before, the cup shape does influence nuance. This this cup shape is going to more accentuate fruit. And I think the I think this action here um, does something to with uh, like floral herbal type aromas. I don't have my tasting cup set regular ra readily available, so I can't just um, pop that open <laughs> and do a little comparison. Uh, but that's OK. Uh, as, as much as I say it, it it influences, I think it's I think it's good to be aware of that if you are wanting to explore nuance because it does influence it. But it's it's not so much to the level that like just enjoy your coffee in whatever mug that you want. Uh, I have I have a large selection of mugs and I use all of them. <laughs> and and most of like maybe not most of them, half of them I guess are probably your pretty typical um, coffee mug shaped like cylinder. Um, honey is a very prevalent experience with this coffee. And oh yeah, yeah I think I do like it better with um, a bit uh, larger ratio. I think th like I said earlier, uh, I had been uh, I had brewed this on at uh, sixteen to one, which is what I always do every morning. Uh, and I wasn't quite doing what I wanted. I could tell there were some interesting things in there, but it was a little uh, muddied. This is eighteen to one, and I can feel. Like much more of the, the flavors kind of dancing around in there. It's honey. There's some kind of fruit. Uh, oh, I know what that is. <laughs> Again, I've, I've had the tasting notes. So I'm just going to share the tasting notes because they're influencing my thoughts. Uh, blackberry, dark honey, which I don't know what, actually what dark honey is, and marzipan. So I've got honey. I've got blackberry. Um, I don't, I mean, I've certainly had marzipan before. I just don't have that. I can't pull that that sense memory right now so um maybe it's in there maybe it's not i feel like this needs to cool a minute so while this is cooling maybe i'll ramble a little bit about uh uh the videos here um last month was a bit challenging like i said i had intended on doing this video before christmas and then the coffee just didn't arrive so i couldn't do that one uh I made like two versions of a video making um, an eggnog latte <laughs> and uh, I, I couldn't find the steamer and uh, the, the eggnog I was using just wasn't more. It was the, the videos were just really didn't come together. Um, sometimes that happens. I'm making videos and they just turn out like garbage. Um, and then I run out of time to, to fix them. Uh, one of the videos I made, the audio just didn't record. That was frustrating. <laughs> so yeah, some, some challenges in the process of, of making these. What I'm hoping to do this year is supply myself with a steady stream of new coffees so that I can just regularly make something like this. Uh, and, uh, like I said, with, well, it gets fruitier as it cools. Wow. That's really nice. Mm. Yeah. The 18 to one, that's spot on with this coffee. I don't really, I can, I can get a slight hint of the roastiness in the background. Um, but I think that's cause I'm looking for it. It's really subtle. Um, and it's very overpowered by the honey and the fruit. So, um, yeah, I'm pleased with uh, this brew. I might tinker with the grind size a little bit. I noticed in, well, maybe I can show it. So I don't know if this is going to pick up. I'm about in focus here. The, um, the ground bed was like a bit muddy. And that often can suggest that the grind size is a little too fine. So yeah, I might grind a little, a touch coarser next time but this is really good. Uh, so the videos, 
gonna hopefully gonna hopefully explore some more copies. Like I said, I want to take a look more at uh, Unravel. They're doing some interesting stuff, but there are a lot of good coffee roasters out there, and I think it would be um, enjoyable if I could show you what can be found. So that's gonna be one of my goals. Very good coffee. Um, to me, the the end the end uh, tasting notes are. Well, I mean, the blackberry is definitely in there. I definitely get honey. I don't know what dark honey is. Um, maybe I need to try more honeys. Well, <laughs> I definitely need to try more honeys because why wouldn't I? Um, I can't remember what marzipan tastes like, so maybe that's in here. Maybe not. Uh, but uh, very enjoyable. Very enjoyable coffee. As I record this, you actually still can get the holiday blend. Uh, I recommend you grab some. It's very good. Uh, I'll link to it below the video. And as always, if you have any questions, please leave them below. Would love it if you could give this video a thumbs up, like it if you've enjoyed what I'm doing, um, and let me know. i uh, always trying to make more things that are enjoyable here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.